Hey everybody, it's the Goots Cast with uh, Andrew Lee. We are covering the Wednesday Night Wars. We, you know, we, we cover this on Thursdays oh. instead of uh, the actual day because there's just so much wrestling to watch. Uh, I feel like I spend 20 hours watching these Wednesday shows. They're so fucking terrible. Um, Andrew Lee, how are you? I'm all right. All right, could seem better days, but I, it's all right. It's all right. Well, you know what though? We, we're just like Cody Rhodes. We're trudging on. Cody Rhodes, by the way. I think I think he doesn't think this virus is is real. He's constantly tweeting support of things reopening. I don't think he I think so. a, I think a lot of people are because they want to see businesses come back, and I totally get it. I I think um, there's nothing wrong with being supportive of things reopening, but I also he's a little bit too. Uh, uh, yeah, but I, I also it's like yeah, I know I mean, like he's not, supportive because he's if yeah. AEW goes under, he's fucked. But yeah. I don't, I'm not really on Twitter too much, so I don't really see what he says, but like, I understand when people are like, they gotta try. He does like, this, po- gotta- he, he tries to make it positive, but it's like, mm-hmm. but you're still like uh, pushing a, uh, a very dangerous agenda. It's, I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. I did see that tweet by Harold Meech, the You know, he's like the president of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah, he's the only one. He's the, New Japan's the only company doing it right. No, he's not the only one. Um, Ring of Honor is doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but New Japan, basically, they're saying um, it's dangerous to do empty mm-hmm. arena shows. And it also it makes Short-term. for uh, a poor quality show, poor product. Yeah. And, 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 oh, it still does. Yeah. And he says, um, "You'll we have to do this even if we're going to take a financial hit. It's basically, basically what is what they're doing. Yeah. Financial the ratings are going down for both shows last night. Uh, well, I think NXT but AEW went down this week. And I and people, well, what's the reason? No, the reason is nobody gives a fuck about these empty wrestling shows. It just seems weird and stupid. And I think it's a turnoff to a lot of people who aren't complete sociopaths like me and you who will just watch wrestling no matter what they put on. So, yeah, I mean, I wonder, I wonder why they're putting it on. Do you know what I'm saying? Because none of them think it's real. Vince, Cody, um, I don't know, Tessa Blatchard. <laughs> I don't know who, who's uh, the Don Callis. None of them, Billy, even Billy Corgan, none of them really think this shit is real. Until they have to, the only, the, you know, people are like, oh, not that many people died. Well, that's because we, we, we followed protocol. Would you prefer, like, just mountains of dead? I think people would only, the only, the only thing that would make some people is we just saw mountains of dead bodies in the street. And then mm-hmm. they would have been like, well, why didn't we do anything? Look at all these dead people. The government is... Uh. And, you know what I mean? Like, like if you're damned, yeah. you do, damned, you don't. That's true, yeah. Like, if Vince doesn't... If Vince's whole family doesn't just drop dead, he's like, well, we just gotta keep having shows. But if his family all died, he'd be like, I want answers. This is bullshit. Yeah. Uh, it's like, Well, speaking of Cody, then, do you want to do AEW first? Yeah, fuck it. Let's do AEW first. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a mood. Um, there was a lot of things that annoyed me. Both show, by the way, both shows stung. AEW is better, but both shows fucking stung. Oh, right? very interesting because I don't think both shows stunk. I don't think they were great, but I don't think they stunk. But I actually think NXT was better. Uh, I think AEW by, was better. Uh, I think good, a, it's good. We'll, but AEW has some bad shit. Has some shit to answer for, and we'll start. Yeah. All right. So AEW starts with uh, Jim Ross, uh, Excalibur. And, Jim Ross, by the way, was bad this funny. week. What? He was bad. He was bad announcer this week. Jim Ross. Um, they're all right. This is not live. This is one of those recorded episodes, oh, and God. everybody on the roster is there tonight. Like everybody, Nia Jax, not Nia Jax, Nyla Rose. I mean, um, um, what do you call it? Uh, private party. They're all making the audience. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you have the whole roster, which is very dangerous. I mean, even WB is not doing that. Where I think I think Cody Rhodes thinks less of this than Vince. I really do. Yeah. Um, so one thing to note about all the matches on AEW last night on Dynamite, none of the referees were wearing face masks, right? Yeah. Now, if you watch Dark, they were. So this is what I think happened on Dark. I think that I think Dark was filmed first before they yes. did any. Mm-hmm. I think and, then, and then Cody probably called them pussies. Yeah, or said that yeah, this is not working, and then they, or they this doesn't look good. 
yeah so then they took them all they took off all the face masks so nobody's wearing a face mask anymore which i thought was eh, i think it was better to wear a face mask but anyway it starts off with um lance archer and jake the snake roberts coming to the ring and jake the snake roberts talks about you know basically what happened last week where he put the snake on brandy rose and he goes like um if you kiss my ass i'll I'll give you an apology. And he talks about, he starts shitting on women. I don't really like this um, Jake Roberts thing. But anyway, while this is happening, they hear a, like an engine sound. And they look and it's Cody Rhodes in his car. And <laughs> This is the worst thing Stone by Cold, far. Yeah. He, we've all seen this before. Stone Cold's <laughs> done it. The Rock's done it. Alberto Del Rio's done it. Cody no one drove, does it as bad as Cody. Cody drove two feet, right? Maybe two feet, and then he got out of the car. He oh my! It was embarrassing. Two feet. It slightly nudged some barricades, <laughs> and then because because it's his car, he doesn't want to f up his. Well, car. then don't drive your fucking car, you retard! I don't know, yeah, like like if really you don't want to damage your car, don't do it. I thought he was oh, gonna like drive into the arena. Yeah. I was like, oh, that that'll be cool, and then he just goes yeah. half, and it's like you're such a pussy. Yeah, you know what he should have done. While Jake Roberts is giving this crappy promo in the ring, you hear honking. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what's that honking? And you see him drive all the way up. And you don't have to go to the barricades, but just drive all the way up until you can't go anymore and then get out of the car and then go to the ring and F these guys up. Instead, we saw you already sitting in the car, already very close. You drove two feet and then you got it. Like you nudged the barricades. Mm -hmm. You got out, and then you went to the ring, and you started fighting. It you was, stepped over the barricades because you didn't drive through them. Uh, it would, the, yeah, this it segment was, was awful. He looked like an idiot. Uh, Jake's promos are going down the toilet. I don't know. He started off with great promos when they first brought him in. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, women belong in the kitchen, and I paid his one woman to tickle <laughs> my feet. And, and it's like, Jake, dude, come on. Like, you're, you're Jake's a master. Promo, Jake's promos are supposed to get Lance Archer over. They're not. They're getting. They're not. Tired. He's trying to get himself over, and, and he doesn't. He doesn't really like even like stand next to Lance Archer. Like they don't. Mm -hmm. They don't have like like he'll just walk like kind of like last week he just kind of came from the side and stood, and yeah. it's like you're already ignoring everything. Just to, if if you already ignore social distancing up the ass, just fucking have Jake Roberts walk out with his doofus. I don't know. I think. I, um, it's. I sometimes think he forgets Lance Archer's there, and then when he realizes, he goes, "Oh, he's here!" You know, <laughs> that's um, that's my guy. Yeah. yeah. It. This also made. I thought it made Cody look kind of stupid because he drove like two feet in the yeah, car. Yeah, it, it, it made him look really stupid. Yeah, like, dude, yeah. if you're gonna drive a car mm -hmm. into the arena or something, you either gotta go all the way. You can't half-ass it, or it looks bad. No, you bad. can't. No, yeah, you can't. Which is what they did. Yeah. So all in all, if you ask me, this is a terrible way to start the show. Okay. Awful way. Awful way to start the show. Awful way to start the show, which they is sure? one of the reasons. Which is one of the reasons why I thought NXT was better. Well, NXT um, had some pretty low lows, but let me just tell you something. Uh, awful way to start the show. If you're gonna do this half-assed, then don't have fans in the arena. Then don't run shows. This is just stupid. It's dumb. I, I hated it, and really, it's just I hated it. I fucking hated it. Anyway, but then the show gets yeah. better. But. Yeah, because one thing I didn't hate was the first match, which is Jurassic Express, uh, where you got Luchasaurus and uh, Jungle Boy versus uh, the best friends. Mm -hmm. And I love this. Orange Cassidy is coming out with a denim face mask, which I love. And um, this was a great match, man. They did a yeah, this lot. Was great. Of, they, a lot was happening in this. They had that one doomsday setup drop kick. You see that? That looked mm -hmm. painful. And what do you call it? The best friends go for a hug. But they do it outside. The first time I've ever seen them do it outside the ring. And then while they're doing it, Jungle Boy dove right onto them. Um, while this is happening, Orange Cassidy's on the rampway for some reason. And Ray Phoenix comes and just like comes in with a flying kick to the face. Because these two guys, Orange Cassidy and Phoenix, are both going to be in the casino uh, ladder match. Um, while that happens, the referee and as well as the best friends, everybody gets distracted, which allows... MJF, who's already at ringside, he's my audience members, he attacks Jungle Boy, throws him into the ring, and Chuck um, Chuck Taylor hits him with the awful waffle, which is a fantastic scoop inverted um, pile driver. And no, yeah, no, it's a, it's a scoop pile driver, I should say. 
and then a uh, best friends win. And after that, Wardlow beats up Marco stunt, um, mm-hmm. just to prove that, you know, this is trying to lead up to the, um, MJF versus Jungle Boy at Double or Nothing. So they're just kind of building up tension between the two sides. Um, great opening match. And I liked how they were building towards, building the storylines towards the, the Double or Nothing matches. Mm-hmm. I, I love this match. That was great. I thought the, the uh, athleticism was off the charts. I like the fact mm-hmm. that they're building angles for Phoenix. They're building angles for Orange Cassidy, MJF. It's really cool. My only yeah. problem is you they've got to do a better job with explaining the characters of the best friends. Um, they're a little bit too goofy for me as characters. And I feel like yeah. you need to, I don't know the difference between the two of them. They, there needs to be more work. I know all about orange Cassidy, but they do seem like they're orange Cassidy's cheerleaders more than actual characters. And that's the only thing other than that. It was great. Yeah. You know? All okay. right. So that's good. Um, after that, we had, um, John Moxley coming to the ring. Um, no, he's coming to the arena. He's got no belt because Dark Order um, mm-hmm. stole it from him. Marquez tries to interview him. He won't have none of that. So we know we're going to see Mox later tonight. The and same goofy our shit. Match. Hold on. Just to say about Moxley, same goofy yeah. shit that he was doing in WWE. This guy gave all these interviews about how the chains are off, Paragon ship. I'm going to be doing everything different. He is the same boring, one no fucking character that he was in WWE. Everything he did tonight, he would have done on Raw if he was the champ. Everything he did. There's nothing about his storyline or anything he's doing in this episode, even the way he moves, that he did not do in WWE. Do you know why? It's because... Because he has no segment. talent. No, it's not that he doesn't have talent, but I, I think he's very talented. I think he's been great to watch. But I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. John Moxley is someone you have more fun watching doing the chase. Yeah. Once he gets the title, he's he's just not as fun. That's why even though he's champion, they took the belt off of him so he could go chase after a belt that's already his. I know, but this is just was more not, fun in the chase. There was nothing fun about uh, anything he did. But yeah, it just it just the way he walks is everything is like this yeah. is this is like the same that we saw like two four years ago. But yeah. So we got match number two is it's a four-way match. Penelope Ford versus Chris Statlander versus Britt Baker, who came out with Pyros tonight, uh, last night, and Sheeta. And this is for, um, uh, just, just, I guess, just trying to build the, uh, the records. Um, this started off pretty good. And one thing about this match, when I, I love three ways and four ways. You know why? Right. Because it covers up people who are not that good because you, if you like, have a one most of the girls in that can ring you, can you imagine if there was a penelope ford versus chris statlander one-on-one how way worse it would have been Ooh. this way they're in the ring for small amounts of time because even though it started off well it ended up becoming a whole bunch of botches as, as the match went on you, there was one where Britt baker hit destroyer on chris statlander and then just kind of like you see when mm-hmm. she's kind of just like pushed her leg. They didn't know what to do next right after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one. Yeah. Penelope Ford hit a handspring, tried to do a cutter, and that didn't work that well either. Um, they botched a Poison Rana. Penelope Ford hit like a Poison Rana on um, Chris Statlander. It looked like – I thought Chris Statlander was going to die. She, looks like, she just landed right on her head. Mm-hmm. Um, um, Sheeta was like the glue – in this match yeah anytime the- things were going back yeah she she was the best wrestler in this match she hit this fantastic argentine backbreaker into like a backbreaker on the knee um chris statlander gets put into no! a lockjaw by Sorry. Britt baker outside the ring um Sheeta hits a knee strike on penelope ford she wins Sheeta maintains the number one contender status what'd you think about this match I didn't like it. Um, first of all, Britt Baker d- doesn't even go. Britt Baker can can just allows the finish to happen. Doesn't try. Are they trying to make Britt Baker like this crazy heel who just like attacks people or something? Like she gets out of control. Is that what they're trying to do? With Not her? like a crazy heel that attacks people, but she is the most um, entertaining person to have in the women's division right now. Right? Um, yeah, yeah that, that, that doesn't say much. Uh, no, she, yeah, but, but, she is. but, 
but she is right. She's the most entertaining right now. She has the funniest promos. She gets vignettes. Uh, her she has some it, matches are really good. Her and Arshida was really good. But my point is because she is the most entertaining woman on the roster, they have to give her a match at Double or Nothing. That's why they were like having her try to build something with Chris Dallin. That's why I, I know, think. but like I just feel like they could have done that later. It doesn't make any sense. You're trying to win this match to be a number one contender, and you're letting the woman, the the other woman pin Penelope, and you're not even doing anything about it. Like I, I don't understand. Correct. Like I like you know did they didn't come across this? Does she hate um, Chris Dallin that much? Like I don't know. Like they they kind of you know Jr. just goes well, women hate each other. Like they didn't really establish it. <laughs> And they then now, yeah. yeah, they didn't really establish it. And uh, yeah, Britt's entertaining on promos, but like, gosh, it's 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 hard to watch her in the ring, and it's hard to like the stuff they're doing with her. It's like I don't know if she's up for some of that stuff, but she can have a good match with somebody who's really good in the ring, right? Like Sheeta. Mm -hmm. That's why their match was really good. But if you're putting her in the ring with Chris Statlander, who's Chris is Chris Statlander is pretty strong. You know, she made some. She's she's a powerful girl, but yeah, I mean, like, I don't know I, how that's gonna. I don't know. I how it's think I think they have by far the weakest women division. I mean, you look at women like Jordan Grace and Impact and Tessa Blatchard, even Jessica Havoc, and they could work circles around these girls. It, and the Impact, same thing with NWA. They have a better women roster too. Camille is better than any um, woman they have on this show. Really? She's got she's got more charisma, Camille, than any of these chicks. Who? Camille. Uh, Camille, yeah, yeah. Um, she's yeah, better than all, I mean, she's she's better than every girl on this show. The, the, their women roster is is atrocious right now. Mm. I I mean I can't really make an argument against that, so I'm not gonna stink. You, you, you've got to. Like, <laughs> you, I'm not even talking about WWE. We haven't even put WWE in the equation. I'm just putting yeah. Impact and and WA, and they blow away this company. It's not even close. Well, it, it, Impact Impact Wrestling has almost their entire time have had a great women's. Yeah, they've, they've always. Had I, don't, a great I can't. Women's. Yeah, they've always had one where they've had Gail Kim and they've had. Um, uh, what do you call it? The beautiful people, a gimmick. Yeah, the that gimmick, gimmick was that great. Stole, yeah. Um, what do you call it? Even Madison Rain even had her moment to shine there. What do you call it? Rosemary Hell and holding down the fort with Sue Young. I mean, they've always had a strong women's division, even uh, better who, than WWE many times. But um, you know who? Yeah. I don't know why they're not uh, showcasing more because she was good in TNA. Is as Ali? They have her with the butcher and the blade. They should have her wrestling yeah. more. And Leva Bates too is good. They're not doing anything. Again. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I don't, I'm just, I don't. Just gonna, can I just say this? Nyla Rose is a channel is a channel turner, and it's not because she's transgender. She is so unappealing and so just not. You don't even look at her like she's just a channel changer. And you know what? Actually, I will. I'm going to disagree with you on that because I thought she was fine tonight. Uh, I, I, she just, she just something extremely unlikable about her, and it has nothing to do with every. There's just like there's just this obnoxiousness, and she's not that good. She dresses badly. And it's just not a good face for that division. I, I, I mean, I would rather you have Jessica Havoc or fucking Camille. It just, I don't know. There's so... <laughs> all right. So, I said a fat yeah. chick, Jessica Havoc. I don't no, no, no. The women's division is is. Is it's a work in progress. Let's I said this show's better than NXT. Progress. Imagine how much I hate NXT if I'm going on. Yeah. They're um yeah, their women's division is a work in progress. But um we know who else is a work in progress. Pineapple Pete Shug D gave a little promo. I love about this his match tonight. He's a, he's a 16 year veteran. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, Hey, this is cool. I'm totally cool. You know, what you know, I'm excited for this opportunity kind of thing. Um then they mentioned that Nyla Rose, uh will now have a match uh, with against Sheeta at Double or Nothing. And we go to match number three, Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy versus Santana and Ortiz. Santana and Ortiz get a jump start on Omega, and then Matt Hardy comes out to some match, and then Sammy Guevara comes out on crutches and a neck brace. And, um, you know, like, uh, what do you call it? There was like a, I think, like, 
Matt Hardy had um, a butterfly like submission hold and had uh, leg scissors, and then Sammy Guevara comes out, so he like releases it, and you would think it's gonna be like a distraction, but he still ends up hitting a twist of faith on Ortiz and still winning. Um, this match did like nothing for me. This match was okay when it was uh, Kenny Omega in the ring. They yeah. should not be putting Matt Hardy in these long matches. You know, th- th- there's a plague. They have plenty. This is pre-taped. There's plenty of time to do. TNA didn't keep Matt Hardy in the ring that long. The guy could barely move in 2016, mm-hmm. and they didn't keep him in the ring that much. He would always be somewhere, and he'd have Jeff Hardy to cover up when they would get in the ring. It, all his stuff would be wacky. Like even the match against Decay at Bound for Glory is incredible, but it's all pre-taped stuff in the back. Yeah. That's the that's where he shines. They're really exposing this guy, and this guy could have been a difference maker. And you know he doesn't he does, doesn't give any promos last night. He, he, he this guy could be a difference maker. And you, you're exposing him for not being able to keep up with everybody else on the roster. I I don't understand why you would do that to him. I wouldn't say he doesn't can't keep up because last week he was it was fun in that. See, but that was but that was to his strength. Yeah. This whatever the fuck this was not this is not to his strength. No, this is not to his strength. And here's another thing about Matt Hardy right now in AEW that I'm not understanding. Right now, he is not broken Matt. His he is right now the Damascus character, right? They've mentioned mm-hmm. him many times. They give him a different intro and everything. And last week he wrestled in three different versions, right? One was yeah. regular Matt Hardy, one was no, one was broken Matt Hardy, then regular Matt Hardy, and then Damascus, right? Now, here's the reason why it doesn't work. This is not, this, this is one of the reasons why, for me, it's not working. When Mick Foley did this, he had three different characters, totally different get-ups, yeah. and totally different move sets too, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you had Mankind wearing the face mask with the button-down shirt, and he had moves like, you know, the mandible claw and everything. Right. Then you had um, Cactus Jack, you know, flannel cut off T-shirt. Um, he's more of a brawling style. Right. And he hits like a double arm DDT and everything. as a finisher. And then you have Dude Love, who's kind of a joke character. And he's wearing sunglasses and a bandana and boots and tights. Damascus and Matt and Broken Matt are like the same character. But same they're telling thing. us. But they're telling us it's different characters, but you're still hitting the twist of fate. It's you're not, still hitting the side effect. You're still doing the delete. It's the same person. I don't get it. Why is it? How is it different? How is it a split personality? But we, well, they're not yeah. giving him – every week, Impact, they gave him sketches. They're not giving this guy any sketches. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they got Vanguard 1 doing most of the fucking work. <laughs> what – what, Soon to be not anymore. <laughs> oh, that's another. We'll get into that in a minute. Yeah. But it's like they're not doing anything with this fucking guy. I mean, they they are, they are, but they're doing all the wrong things. And it's like, look, they're so intent on we're in ring, we're in ring, we're in ring. No, I don't. You can cut a match. You know, there's no real audience there. If you if you want to do a pre tape at Matt Hardy's place, you can do a pre tape because it's safer. And nobody's gonna give a fuck. Nobody's gonna give a fuck if only Matt Hardy's cutting promos from from his his compound. Uh, that's his string. Especially if you're not live to begin with. Yeah, why are you putting this guy in long matches? He he can't feed. It's just dumb. It's fucking dumb. By the time we get back to live crowds, people aren't gonna give a fuck about this guy. And here's another thing: you have the full roster there. It's not like you're short yeah. of people either. Why Billy would... Gunn can go more than this guy. Put him in the fucking ring. He... Why is Austin Gunn not being used? Let yeah. him take the pinfall. Why yeah. is um? Why is Sean Spears not wrestling? Why is not um? Um, who else is there that that could have ten? Been why did ten not wrestle last night? Q T Marshall. Q T Marshall. You know? Why are you yeah, putting he, this guy in the ring when he and you're making giving him long fucking matches with Kenny Omega, you know, as his partner, and he's making everyone look bad. It's just yeah. This didn't work for me. Yeah, it's it's not working. Um, this Matt Hardy. I was so excited for Matt Hardy in AEW, yeah. and it's not working, man. It this, pisses me off. This match, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad match, but it just didn't do anything for me. I was just no. like, yeah, it's just a match. Yeah, yeah. Um, didn't I? It didn't um push any storylines in my eyes. Didn't make me want to like. I have to see this thing now. And um, they got to give Santi- Santana Ortiz a name. Instead so of just Santana and Ortiz. No, they do have a name, but no, but it's like the worst name. It's they're proud. Proud and powerful. It's a, it's a crappy name. That's why everyone still calls him Santana Ortiz. 
Nobody wants to call him proud and powerful. They should just call him LAX. They should just say, can we get that name, you know? TNA? Like, I don't know. It's just – Yeah, yeah. You know what? It, it, it also just doesn't make any sense that those guys are with Jericho. I don't know. It just feels like they're you know so – They should call themselves the PRX, Puerto Rican Express, or yeah. Puerto, Puerto Rican Exchange. NYX, New York, New York Express. Yeah, NYX. NYX. There you go. They're from New York. NYX. There you go. And getting sued by Marvel is better anyway. So, um, yeah. Hey, Hulk Hogan worked had, out a deal with them. So. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. You had Darby Allen and Taz do another interview session where Taz is telling him, hey, man, like a couple of weeks ago, you pinned yourself and he's trying to, like, hey, you know, I can help you out this. And Darby gets mad and he walks away. And then it's then the announcers announced that Darby Allen is one of the participants in the casino mm-hmm. ladder match. And they actually explained the rules about how this is going to work. Um, this is a Royal Rumble ladder match. It's basically a Royal Rumble ladder match. Two start out in the ring, and mm-hmm. every 90 seconds, another person enters the ring. You're going to have a total of nine uh, competitors. So right now, they have Darby Allen, Cole Cabana, Ray Phoenix, and um, Orange Cassidy. So you mm-hmm. have five more spots left. Who do you think are going to put in those five spots? I think one's going to be Sean Spear. Uh, the Scorpio Sky was announced today. Scorpio Sky, okay. Okay. So that's five. Uh, you have four more spots left. Four more spots. Okay, Sean Spears is a good one. Yeah, I would say Sean Spears. Uh, I would put Luchasaurus. I, I would put in if I can. Yeah, I would put in Frankie Kazarian. Mm, um, Frankie Kazarian, okay. And then who else? Uh, geez, it's it's tough to think about this roster. Yeah, if you put in you put in Sean Spears, Frankie Kazarian, Luchasaurus. You could have one more person. QT Marshall. I don't know. Oh, uh, no, um, no, no. Jimmy Havoc. Yes, that'd be a good one. Joe, or Joey Janela, somebody, some idiot. Who's Joey Janela will be a good one. Uh, Joey Janela instead of Luchasaurus. Joey Janela and the uh, guy you just mentioned, and Jimmy Havoc. Who can be the bump machine in this match? Joey Janela, right there. Yeah, there you right. go. Um, can I just say something about this about this Taz thing? First of all, uh, I'm gonna say AEW. I like the idea of all the older wrestlers becoming mentors to younger guys. Stop putting guys who can't take bumps as the mentors, because Jake the Snake and Arn Anderson can't take bumps. So I know no matter what Jake does, Cody can't really beat the shit out of him because he'll die. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Arn. And they, Taz can't take bumps. So what, don't have Taz try to be Darby's mentor. And also, Darby spoke. It was like, I was a collegiate wrestler. Kind of kill this mystique. Um, don't, don't have him talk about how he was a collegiate wrestler. We, we should assume this guy has been living on the streets since he was 12 years old. You yeah. know? Don't, but, like, yeah, stop putting – it's a good idea, but if these guys can't take bumps and can't move, like Bobby Heenan took bumps, Jimmy Hart took bumps, which is why it worked, because you knew if they got people, they, they're going to get their asses kicked if they stick out out of line. These guys can't take bumps. I don't know how many people they can get that are old timers that can still take bumps. I know one, Matt Hardy. No, Matt I mean Hardy's like not wrestling Hardy. anymore. Not wrestling. Well, he shouldn't be wrestling anymore. He should just be cutting promo. Yeah. He should be Darby Allen's mentor. Who? Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But Dar- but Matt's not done. That's the whole point. Matt's uh, he's done. done. He doesn't know it yeah. yet. He's done. <laughs> he's done. All right. Now, right after this, they were trying to interview Sheeta, and Sheeta, by the way, speaks better English than um, Asuka and stuff. She's pretty good. I think Asuka speaks good English. She just plays that character. Yeah. And then while she's getting interviewed, Nyla Rose comes and she's like, hey, we got a match at Double or Nothing and I got a present for you. And then she takes out a Kendall sticks and hits her on the head and just walks away. I thought oh. that was funny. That was I funny. Know. I thought it looked bad. I don't like her. I really don't like her. It's just very, uh, just very off-putting. I don't like her. Um, she's, she, well, I, I can't say I haven't, I, have, I can't say I, I haven't seen her in a good match because I did see her in a good match before. Who was the opponent? But I think it was like uh, it was Rio. That Rio. There, there you go. The there, you, yeah. there you go. That's all. But um, yeah. But I can't, like so I can't say like I have not enjoyed something that she's done. But is Rio even still in the company? How come they don't talk about her anymore? I I think she's still with the company, but she's like can't come here right now. Okay. I mean, yeah. they should just get that was their first champion. They should at least say like, oh, by Rio would be here, but because of COVID, yeah. I don't know. But just um, but um, yeah, like um, basically. Um, yeah, so Nyla Rose versus uh, Sheeta at Double or Nothing. Hopefully, Sheeta wins the title. Hopefully. That'd be and great. They fire you know Nyla what? Rose. But, uh, you know, then you could just have a champion just having 
good matches because because she, Sheeta's always going to have a good match. You can mm-hmm. put her in there with a broomstick; yeah. she'll have a good match. And just yeah, have she's great. Match. Just have good women's matches every at least once every week. And then um, you had match number four. You had MJF, who is eight and one. They 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 made sure to tell us his record of eight and one versus Jobber Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson gets one movement. He chops MJF. And as soon as he chopped NJF, NJF gave him the biggest slap of the night. You hear his slap? He slapped yeah. him so hard. And then NJF basically, by the way, during this match, um, the squash match, they mentioned that uh, Britt Baker and Chris Statlander at double or nothing. And you're going to mm-hmm. have Private Party versus Best Friends for the buy-in, which is probably going to be on YouTube. The pre-show, um, yeah. Yeah, M- yeah, the pre-show. MJF wins with the Fujiara armbar. Um, I'm going to tell you something. Um, and after his match, he cuts a promo on Marco Stunt because um, he's saying Marco Stunt is free next week. I'm gonna wrestle him next week. This, this how this was where I, I'm telling you where uh, a point where Jr. was actually good on commentary. MJF never mentioned next week. He just said, "I saw you. I, I saw Marco." Yeah, Stunt I thought it was gonna be like that night. I was like, "He's giving another match." Yeah, but Jr. was the one to, after the promo corrected it. He's like, "Isn't that for next week?" Like, you know, he made sure to like keep it going so jared's getting a little better i can't i gotta give him a little bit of props um here's something that was very interesting they're telling me that mjf is eight and one now nine and one right mm-hmm. he's got a better record than brody lee yeah why is he because this now, record shit doesn't really matter it doesn't really count uh, yeah. if, does i stop pretending like it does you're gonna do the same goofy wwe shit yeah. That you 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 stop with this fucking uh, the record doesn't really count it doesn't really yeah. matter. If you're telling me that he's if you AEW you're the one who's telling me he's eight and one right I'm not looking this up you're telling me as I'm watching the show he's telling me he's eight and one but he is not but he's fighting Jungle Boy at double or nothing and not in championship you're telling me how, how is he not in the how is he not in the ladder match yeah at the very least yeah you're telling me it's a joke and but, um here's a here's the thing. I would be more interested in seeing a, a, a John Moxley versus MJF than him versus Brody Lee. But I get why they don't want to do it. They're like, oh, we don't want maybe take the title off Moxley this soon. And we also don't well, want the, MJF to lose. Uh, I, don't know. I just feel like MJF should be the guy. They should put the belt on him or give him. I don't know why he's the wrestling Jungle Boy for no fucking reason. He should always yeah. have a storyline. Um, he should, or he should be in that fucking ladder match and he should win it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. He's the best yeah. thing on the fucking show. He by yeah. far is the best thing on the fucking show. It's not even close. And he's so young, which is what's so impressive. Yeah. He's the future. He should be the present. Uh, the, the, a lot of these other guys aren't cutting it. Cody Rhodes ain't cutting it. Do you see how we're already four matches in and we already got a problem with every single segment? I know, but I, I still like mind. this better. I still like this better than NXT. Keep that I in mind. Fun. Okay. Match number five. We got Pineapple Pete versus Jericho, which I'm not going to lie to you. I was excited for this because they built it up for like week after week. Oh, after week. I was so fucking pissed. Jericho was wearing a Pineapple Pete shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, Pineapple Pete curses. They had to like bleep it out. And he's just kind of going ham, blah, 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 blah. And then Jericho just hits him with a Judas effect, and it's over, <laughs> right there. Um, squash match. Horrible. Yeah, that's all it was. It was a squash Horrible. match. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. And Horrible. then Jericho gets on the mic, and he um, he actually cuts a promo, which I thought was really funny. He was like, "I heard a," uh, he was like, "I heard uh, Hangman Page quit because <laughs> yeah. he hasn't been on the show." He's like talking trash about everybody in the league. He gets his. He gets his, you know, Jericho gets at least, he's allowed to say shit at least once a week. So mm-hmm. he puts it in every show. It says shit, mentions the coronavirus, and he says how, like, we still want the, you know, right now the coronavirus, everything's stopped, but, like, we still want the elite. So what we're going to do is a stadium stampede match, inner circle versus the elite, meaning that this is where they're going to have a football stadium and they're just going to basically do whatever they want in the football stadium. That's fun. And That's I, good. That sounds I'm, good. So I'm assuming this is Jericho, Sammy Guevara, proud and powerful and Jake Hager. That's five versus mm-hmm. Omega. The, I mean, the elite is Omega, 
the, the what do you call it? Cody Rhodes, the Young Bucks, and Hangman Page. Are those five people coming in as well, Ben? I got Hangman Page is not going to come in while there's a corona in Eric. Because this is Matt for Hardy. double or nothing. This Matt is Hardy. for double or nothing. Matt Hardy. Uh, I guess so. Mm-hmm. And um, Vanguard, yeah, because at, at the end of this, Vanguard 1 came flying in with the t shirt that Jericho had given him weeks ago. And um, he asked, he asked um, Bear Glass Vanguard one today accept, and then he wrote on the screen, "Yeah, he accept." And then Jericho goes, "We we, we decided we're not going to offer you the membership. We got our we got our six member right here anyway." And it's Floyd, his bat, and then they just start beating the crap out of Vanguard one. They just beat it, broken he up. Killed, they killed Vanguard they one. Killed him. Yeah, everybody took turns hitting him. And then Matt Hardy came running to the ring. Everybody leaves, and he starts and cradling. Cr- the he barely Vanguard really one. Run. I won't lie to you. I did laugh when he was cradling a dead, yeah, 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 you know, drone. Uh, what do you think about this whole thing? I hated uh, that the, fucking the match. match the- I hated yeah. that fucking match, and I, and, and we'll get and it leads to the next segment, which kind of you know maybe I didn't like this show because I hate it. You had the opportunity to create, uh, make a make a star with Pineapple Pete. He has a lot of charisma. People like him. Pineapple Pete cannot be a star. Did you see his body? We'll get Willie Mac. Yeah. Look at Nyla Rose. Come on. Come on. But at least Pineapple Pete can talk and he's likable. You've built this up for weeks. Look, uh, he, Dude, of course. Those were, some, those were some terrible punches you were throwing at Jericho. I, I, I got to I, – I like – but it's so Nyla Rose and Britt Baker are throwing terrible punches. You keep going on like, well, that's got – they're all they, – half these workers fucking stink on this show. So <laughs> here's another – at least this guy's got charisma. I like – you just, you know, we're talking about I hate Nyla Rose. I hate Britt Baker. I, I don't really understand the best friends. This guy, I like. I like him. I want to see more of him. Oh, yeah, but his punches. What the fucking Britt Baker looks like she's, I don't know, looks like she's like a cat claw, like swiping at a fucking, she, looks, she can't do any moves, yeah. Britt Baker. And we got to keep giving her fucking promo time with her big nose. Like, I'm just saying, Pineapple Pete, I like this guy. Give him more. Jericho has the shirt. It's, it's, it's a classic setup for Jericho to underestimate this guy. And they have a, a good little match, unless they tr- unless they went over stuff in the back. And Jericho was like, "I don't think this guy's any good." A squash and move on, mm-hmm. because this leads will leads my problem with the next match. The next match, we'll, we'll get to it in a second. But uh, I liked the promo, and I liked uh, him. I, I I didn't like him though destroying Vanguard One. Why not? Uh, I, I I I I think he got to build the Hardy gimmick up more before he starts shitting on it. I don't know. Everything with Hardy just seems off. It doesn't seem like it's translating over. And I don't know. I, but I love the promo. I thought it was good. But I hated this fucking match. I hated it. I hated it. This was by far. No, I mean, was the Cody thing worse? It was, just, it was horrible. They never should have squashed him like that. They never. I don't care if he's a bad worker. They're all bad workers. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So then they do uh, John Moxley. Nyla Rose has a beer gut hanging out, and you're like, well, he has no – but what? I don't – Nyla Rose looks like she just – Nyla Rose looks like she just well, got out of out Well, of she's Popeyes. supposed to be like – Okay, well, he's called you know, Pineapple Pete. She's it's supposed okay to be a monster, you know? Well, he's supposed to be a Pineapple Pete. Hmm. You froze, didn't it? Uh, I can still hear you, but your picture froze. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, you back? Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I was going to say, Nyla Rose is supposed to be like a monster. She's supposed to be big. Okay. And I thought she's supposed to be big. Gut. Yeah, because she's supposed to be big. She's supposed to be like a Bam Bam Bigelow. Okay, but she like shouldn't have a fucking gut. She shouldn't. No, that's her character. She's supposed to be like a big monster. Okay, dude. well, Pineapple Pete could be a guy that, like, that eats too many pineapples. And he likes to just party, but he can go. Okay? Like, I don't know. Like Maybe, but they didn't. Yeah, maybe, but. Um, well, uh, I'm telling. Uh, look, look, AEW, fucking give Pineapple Pete another shot. All right? Put him in the fucking ladder match. Maybe they will. Who knows? Look, all, right. look, all I'm saying is I hate this show. I like Pineapple Pete. So clearly they're doing something right with Pineapple Pete. So you should keep doing it. You should have buried the fucking guy. And then I got to watch this, this, this piece of shit main event go on and on. Let's talk about this fucking main event. Wait, before we get to the main event. Um, actually, yeah, I'll do the main event. And then I'll, um, what do you call it? I'll talk about what they mentioned for the next week. Okay. Yeah. So main event, they, let's, let's talk about next week real quick. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So they showed the uh, John Moxley a uh, Dark Order recap, and then they mentioned all the matches for next week on mm-hmm. AEW uh, Dynamite. It's going to be NJF versus Marco Stunt, which we already talked about. Uh, I think it's a sit down 
um, face-to-face confrontation between Arn Anderson and Jake Roberts, they said, right? That should be fun. Yeah, yeah that should be fun. Um, then they also mentioned 10 from the Dark Order versus John Moxley. Okay. And Ray Phoenix versus Orange Cassidy, That'd which I fun. think is be a, that's Next week sounds Ray, like fun. By the way, sure fuck it up. Ray Phoenix is very, very good. Even today and last night when he did that, just that one flying kick, that was like the best flying kick I've ever Ray seen. Ray Phoenix is great. I yeah. like him a lot. Then you're going to have um, – what did I have here? We have – MJF, oh. Marco Stone. No, no, not that. I think it was like Sammy Guevara versus Matt Hardy. That's that's another thing that's going to happen. Oh, my God. Happen. Stop and, doing it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Like but, well, you know, this retaliation for Vanguard 1, okay. you know? I'm going to retaliate so, so far we have blow my brains out. MJF, Marco Stone, 10 versus John Moxley, Phoenix versus Orange Cassidy, Sammy Guevara versus Matt Hardy. Already four matches. And then he said uh, Mike Tyson. Presenting the title for Cody yeah, Rhodes, at double or nothing, Lance yeah. Archer at double or nothing. That was a I did not know that that was happening. I was like, wow, that was pretty that's pretty big. That's good. I like the fact they got pretty Mike Tyson. Big. Yes. Um. So that's what they mentioned, and then we go right. In. Any anything about this you want to mention? No, it was. It was uh, I mean, I don't think Matt Hardy should be having a match with Sammy, but let's keep going. Sammy may might be able to carry him. Okay, let's keep going. Sammy's good. Sammy, I, I got to rant about this main event before we go to NXT. Yeah. So the main event is Brody Lee versus Christopher Daniels. Um, so what ends up happening is um, Ten and SCU. Uh, what do you call it? They they cause a distraction, and then um, Brody Lee takes a protected chair shot to the head. That means he has hands up. Some people are going to be all the from Chris Daniels or no from Dean Ambrose. Shot. What? Who the, who gives him the chair shot? I think it was uh, – man, I forget who did – I think it was – well, during the match, right? Or was it – Yeah, I think it happened during the match. It was Christopher Daniels. It was Christopher Daniels, oh, right? Boy. What ends up happening is everybody kind of comes into the – like Christopher Daniels has um, Brody Lee in a Koji clutch. Mm-hmm. And then the melee happens. Like everybody, you know, like, the, you know, the, the Dark Order people and then the SCU come in. They come in. They all come into the ring. Because of the distraction, Christopher Daniels lets go, and they all let, leave the ring. But the referees, I mean, not the referees, the, the commentators, this is another great example of commentators doing a job. They do mention that even though those people got in the ring, nobody touched Christopher Daniels or Brody Lee. None of the contestants got touched. That's why the referee did not stop the match. Um, Christopher Daniels hits Brody Lee with all his finishes, best moonsault ever, angels' wings. And Brody Lee comes out with a like even like a one count. He hits him with a discus lariat, and Brody Lee wins. And then um, they make sure to call him the self-proclaimed world champion. And then Moxley comes out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Moxley comes out, and then they try to fight a little bit. And then Brody Lee leaves with his Dark Order. Moxley beats one of the Dark Order people, and then he just cuts a promo in the ring. That's basically what happened. That's okay. how it ended. He didn't even go after Brody Lee, which he totally could have. Like I know, yeah. I uh, I didn't. Uh, the, the the last angle was whatever it was fun. I hated, I hated, I hated this match, especially when you put it in, in with next to the other match. Look, Chris Daniels. I know he's a great worker, but they're kind of making him like this, a kind of like a goofball, right? With S- Southern California, right? He's like kind of like their goofball leader now. Um, I mean, he walked out like a, like an idiot. He's like doing that stupid. He's walking out with like that stupid strut. He looks like a goofball now. Is that his new character? He's a goofball? I, I mean, I, I don't think he looks like a goofball, but I, know, I understand what you're saying, yeah. Okay. Brody Lee is supposed to be this new dominant, like, badass, you know, he's a real threat to the to – the, to the, this is the match that should have been a squash. You, this is the match. It shouldn't have been this back and forth. He shouldn't have been able to hit Brody Lee with a chair. Um, this match should have been way shorter, and the Pineapple Pete match should have been way long. I'm sorry, but you're trying to get over Brody Lee as a threat. He should have easily taken out Chris Daniels. Chris Daniels is Chris Daniels is at least the older guy in SCU, right? They're kind mm-hmm. of so he should have taken out. They should be. Oh my God, Brody Lee destroyed Chris Daniels. This is a, what John Moxley better be ready. And oh, fuck, sorry. They should have done that. It would have been better. Instead, like he's going back and forth. So like if you like if you really uh, had to struggle with with Chris Daniels, I I don't think I don't think John Moxley's gonna have a problem with you, Brody. Sorry. So what did you think about the chair shot to the head? But that was stupid. I mean, why is why is he why is Chris Daniels doing that? Why is he getting that much 
on Brody when they haven't gotten Brody over. Suddenly he has a title shot. They haven't talked about him. They har- I kept forgetting. I still feel like Jericho's the champion. They talk more about him than they do Moxley or, or Brody. <laughs> they do. They do. And yeah. It's like, yeah, no, he should have gotten – Brody should have, like, really dismantled Chris Daniels. And, and, and they should have, the answer should have been, like, if he's doing this to Chris Daniels, you know, Chris Daniels is, is a veteran. He's a ring general. He did that stupid walk uh, to the ring. What, what is uh, – do they explain, like, the worst town that they've ever been to? Have they, is that a catchphrase they have? It's SC doesn't do that. Oh, they didn't do it. They didn't do that. Um, is that their catchphrase? Why do they have shirts like that? This is the worst time we've ever been to. It. I have um, maybe they were doing that when um, they were at like Ring of Honor or something. But, but, but why is that? Why is that their T-shirt in AEW? If the, like like explain it to me like why why like you just show up with these gimmicks we're so and censored and there's like, oh yeah all this stuff was in Ring of Honor. I'm not watching Ring of Honor. I'm watching yeah. AEW. In AEW, they're they're good guys, and they they always come out singing to the ring. They they don't they don't say anything like that. In Ring of Honor, they were heels, yeah. But but why wow. do they still have the shirts? Say this is the worst town we've ever been to. <sighs> because it's AEW. This is what they do. <laughs> I have no idea. Dude, did you really think this was better than NXT? I don't know. Let's go through NXT. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's go. But okay, like, I, I, you know, I have I problems think... with this show. You know, I have something because it's like yeah. they. They think they're the shit, and people will give them passes. And every segment, I see something that's like a glaring flaw. Yeah, and and it's not like we're biased against AEW because last week I was talking about how I thought it was a great show. It's not and like AEW I, I, Dark I, had a lot of great matches. Yeah, yeah. It's mm-hmm. not that we're biased. It's just like this was not like the worst worst show I saw, but it was not that good of a they show. They just constantly you know? make mistakes that are very TNA like, or sometimes even mm-hmm. worse. Because TNA wouldn't just take a gimmick from Ring of Honor and just keep doing it without explaining to the audience. I, I, I don't care how bit, how much you think Vince Russo was a fucking jerk off or whatever. He would not be like, oh, so your gimmick in Ring of Honor was you said this catchphrase. And you're never going to say this catchphrase in TNA, but you're still going to wear T-shirts with the fucking catchphrase. No. Yeah. He would either re-explain it to the audience or get a whole new gimmick for these characters. Um, and it's just, it's just very it's, – there's a lot of WCW um, – TNA mistakes on this show, and they don't seem, and no one wants to acknowledge it. But I will. Do, do you think um, Brody Lee and John Moxley are headlining um, Double or Nothing? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I don't. I mean, that's like a match I have no desire to see. I think it'll be a good match. I do think they'll have a good match, but uh, I don't know. But Brody Lee hasn't really impressed me since he came out. See, like, like they, they kind of exposed Matt Hardy and Brody Lee very fast, like. Brody had, could, had some great matches, but they, they're letting him talk too much. They, he has awful gear. You know, they're, they're letting him – they're having Chris Daniels beat him up. It just is like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. It would have been better if he squashed – Like, everyone like, – everyone does – Yeah. squashed them, but they, – they, yeah. well, You know what it is? Because these guys, uh, Matt Hardy and, and, Bro, and Brody Lee, they, they, they do these podcasts with Jericho. Like, oh, yeah, WWE helped me back. I really couldn't show everyone what I could do. You know, at AEW, though, it's so much better. I have so much more freedom. And, like, a guy like John Moxley do the same shit he would do in WWE. And, and Brody Lee actually looks worse now. So it's like, well, what were they holding you back from doing? Sucking? Like, because you were fucking awesome in WWE. You did this. Uh, Luke Harper deserved a big push. He was fucking great. And now it's like, what the fuck is yeah. this? Okay, sorry. No, that's all right. No. Um, yeah, it was the more you talk about, it, the more I realized it was a shittier show than I. Yeah, thought, I'm like, but... oh, I thought it was. You know what it was that that first match was so good. It's like, wow, this is clearly a better show. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about NXT, which I thought, by the way, was a better show, and I'm gonna go into the reasons there, why. There's some stuff that get me pissed off here in this show. Okay? Yes, don't get me wrong. This wasn't the perfect show either. They were both. You know what they are? They're both like me. They're cho- they were show. chores this week, dude. This yeah, is, yeah. I... They're both like. This was work. This is the first time this felt like work. Yeah. This isn't like both shows. Not like it's not like that one terrible raw like level bad, but it's not like it's like you know, what right. it, you know why it's not like the terrible raw beds? Because I know both shows could do better. And the yeah. internet is telling us how great both shows are. And I'm watching the both and I'm like, this is fucking dreadful. Like and, and then they're like, whoa, the ratings went down. Dave Melts is probably gonna like, I don't know, blame um I don't know. He'll, he'll blame something. So blame Jim Cornette or something. I don't know. When the reality is these shows aren't that good, 
and yeah. people were, were the only ones who were watching these shows. No, there's really, no buzz about AEW. It's really sad because two just last week they had a great show, and this day, this week I was like, "What are you doing?" But anyway, NXT we got Byron Saxton and Maronello and uh, Beth Phoenix doing the commentary in a show that's not live. Right off the bat, they got a they got a match right off the bat, tag team match, Timothy Thatcher and Matt Riddle versus uh, Fabian Eichner and Martel Bartel from uh, Imperium. It's a pretty decent match, you know, just back and forth. Um, what ends up happening is uh, Matt Riddle does a monkey flip. Of, he has Bartel and he does a monkey flip and he throws him accidentally into Timothy Thatcher. By the way, it was a cool looking fun monkey flip. Timothy yeah. Thatcher gets knocked out. He gets super annoyed at this and he leaves the ring. Um, mm-hmm. He leaves. He leaves the match. Now, Matt, uh, Matt Riddle is left to defend on his own. He gets hit with a European uppercut powerbomb combo. And Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner win. We got new NXT tag team champions. I thought this was kind of a fun way to start the show. You got like a tag team match title change. And then um, after this, um, Timothy Thatcher is getting interviewed in the back. And now you understand why he's doing this. He goes like, hey, I wanted to be a tag team champion, but like, I don't want to be doing this like this game show, you know, like they did a couple of mm-hmm. weeks ago. This all this goofy stuff. I'm gonna do this game show and all that. Like I don't want to be a tag team champ with this hot mess, you know? Because because Timothy Thatch is supposed to be like no nonsense serious yeah. guy. And yeah. Matt Riddle comes and start. They start fighting backstage. I thought this was great. This is a hot way to open up the show. What did you think? I, I thought they rushed the Timothy Thatch return. We don't know much about him yet. I know like you, we, me, and you do, but mm-hmm. the audience doesn't. I thought it was way too fast. He really. You know, like the, the the thing he fucked up with wasn't even that bad for Timothy Thatcher to turn that hard. No, uh, but it was like a culmination of things. Because like in the interview, he was talking about like, man, like this guy. I don't want to do all this. All, all this yeah, but they did. Was doing. was he annoyed at the game show a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, he was a little annoyed at the game show. Yeah, they should have. Sh- I I don't. I didn't get this. Yeah. This the. I didn't get the impression that Timothy Thatcher was going to turn on him or was getting that annoyed with him. It was um, a little. It was a little out of nowhere, but I think it's because. Yeah, maybe yeah it was, I thought it was a little bit too much out of nowhere, and uh, yeah. well, but you know what? It would have been fine, but then they kind of fuck it up later on by letting them wrestle yeah. that same show. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Yeah, but this like, was yeah. the 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 match was good. The match was good until that. I thought that was weird, but I'm glad Imperium has the belts. They're yeah. fucking great. Yeah. Imperium has the belts. Mm-hmm. Then you get match number two. Uh, it's gonna be Tegan Knox versus. Indy Hartwell, Australian actor. And this was really interesting because Mauro Ranello. Mama actually, Mia. Yeah, he actually mentioned how WB has tons of Australian talent right now, which they do. If you mm-hmm. combine Australia and New Zealand workers right now, they have probably more than 10 Ross, uh, active wrestlers on their roster right now, which is why I think it's like, Secretly, they're going to start doing it. I bet you they, it wouldn't be a surprise if they do an NXT Australia sometime in the future. You know? Yeah, if, well. Because they're taking all the talent. Like, in the future, Australia. future, future. Yeah, future. in the future, future, yeah. Um, just a standard match. Uh, Tegan Knox wins with the shiniest wizard, which is just a shining wizard. Um, last this time is... we saw Indy Hartwell, was she was jobbing on uh, SmackDown. No, Raw. Or Raw, Raw. yeah. Probably yeah. Raw, yeah. I like Indy Hartwell. There's something about her I like even though she's yeah. a jobber. I like her. You know, here's the thing I noticed about watching NXT women's matches. They have a lot of, like, good workers, but all these women are, like, exactly the same. There's no character. In, in, right, no, but in, in, India at least looks different. Yeah, but they all, no, like, okay, Aaliyah, um, Aaliyah just, like, I'm like. Oh, I can't tell the difference between Tegan Knox or Dakota Kai. They look the same yeah, fucking woman. They all look, these, these, um, um, Mia Yim and uh, Kaden, uh, Kaden Carter. They're they just all look the same. There's no yeah. gimmick. They're just they're all good workers. But that's just it. They're just all good workers, and they just have. There's no at least in AEW. Yeah, the women wrestlers suck, but at least they all have an individuality. Yeah. You know, one's a dentist, mm-hmm. one's a monster, one's a alien. You know, one's a slut. You know, like. <laughs> You know, just have everything. But here, it's just like they're all the same. They just have different. Yeah, this, this crew is like the kind of blends crew, but they're still good workers. But yeah, yeah this was no, like a nothing nothing match. This was like yeah. literally nothing. Yeah, I can't. I don't mm-hmm. care about any of these wrestlers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you had a uh, Rhea Ripley promo uh, where, you know, she's back and she's talking the promo. The promo was fine, but then she mentioned something that I thought was really fun. 
that just like didn't make no sense. She goes, because she's cutting a promo on Charlotte, right? And how mm-hmm. she wants her title belt back. And she goes, there's an old man saying, and I thought like, oh, because she's talking about Charlotte. She's talking about her old man. It's probably going to be to beat the man. You got to be the man. And instead she goes, the old, old man saying, go, go, that goes, we've only just begun. And I was like, what? Who's, which, what old man says that? I was like, I've never heard this old man. I guess her old man. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It just, I just thought it was really funny because I'm like, mm. she's building towards. And I was like, oh, it went, it went nowhere. They show Matt Riddle backstage. He's got a pad, uh, like an iPad, uh, and he's got William Regal on it. And he's basically asking William Regal for a match tonight with Timothy Thatcher. Regal says yes. Timothy Thatcher comes and just beats the crap out of him, throws the TV at him, and they're going to... Yeah, they're rushing this. They're rushing this storyline so fast. I was. I think there's a reason why they're rushing this. What's that? I think... So, me, originally, when I heard that Timothy Thatcher got hired, Timothy Thatcher had gotten hired, like, obviously, months, months before he made his debut. I thought he originally got hired because they were going to ship him over to NXT UK because him... Right now, there's, there's a problem in NXT UK. There's a big problem. Walter's too champion. Good? Walter's champion. He's too good, and they everybody, almost everybody, in the US, NXT UK roster is like tiny. They're but, all but really small. I hear what you're saying, but they can't have any events in the UK. So why would you? Have Walter, Walter can't travel here. So why would you? And Timmy Dietrich can't travel there. So what are they supposed to wrestle each other? In Call of Duty. I don't know. Maybe they're. I don't. I have no idea. But I always thought when this is my theory. I don't think they can. I don't think they can have a UK event until 2021. Yeah, but just hear me out. So okay. Timothy Thatcher and uh, Walter actually have a lot of history on the Indies, mm-hmm. right? Together, and I always thought Timothy had Thatcher was hired specifically to be fed or have a, a feud with uh, Walter. I'm not saying that's the plan, right? But I I, I think what I'm what I think is that. They have different plans for Timothy Thatcher, and that's why they rushed this. That's what I'm trying to say. I, 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 could, I could see that if there was no quarantine, but, I mean, you know, uh, yeah. there's no reason to rush him. He can't go there, so. Or maybe, I don't know. Some, I don't, know, I don't something. think Walter could come here, and I don't think Walter will come here. Because how's he, you know. Well, the reason what I'm – one of the things the history is that – see, this group Imperium, right? Mm-hmm. is based on an indie stable that Walter had with Marcel Bartel and Timothy Thatcher was actually in it, right? Mm-hmm. Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner are here, yeah. right? And they're supposed to be no-nonsense, the ring is sacred kind of. Maybe, thing, maybe, you know? maybe uh, Timothy Thatcher takes over Imperium because Walter's not around. Yeah, while this is happening. And then once everything goes back to normal and Walter's kind of like, Hey man, you forget I'm really in charge of this group, and there's a little mm. power struggle, and it leads to something. You know, um, you know that's what I think. It's, that's where I think it's going. But I obviously this is my theory. I, I'm just fantasy booking. Right I um I I yeah I I think with the UK though, there's like literally no no wiggle room. They they don't have a Trump on their corner there, so I just think there is no fucking way that anything's gonna happen there. Yeah, because um, what you could do is if you have Timothy Thatcher. Because right now, Imperium is just two guys, right? Yeah. Because, you know, everybody else, like Walters and, and Alexander Wolfer are in the UK, actually there, and they can't come over. You put Timothy Thatcher with Baby and Eichner and Marcel Bartel, and then you have, they have the tag team titles, and you have them go up against, uh, you, you know, Undisputed Error, right? Because they're here now, just keep this storyline going, this feud going, this program going for, I don't know, next month or two, find another three guys you can feud with and then just keep it going until things start to open up, you know? Mm-hmm. That's what I think is happening. But okay. I can well, be- we'll, we'll, well, it's going to be a long time, though. I mean, you're going to have to stress this oh. out till January. You know what? There's one thing WWE is really good at, milking okay. programs. They're really good at milking feuds. Right. So. Okay. So, um, so uh, yeah, okay. So let's keep moving. All right, match number three. We got um, – this is part of the Cruiserweight tournament. Um, we got Tony Nese versus um, Jake Atlas. Jake Atlas cuts a promo about how, you know, like, oh, I'm a big Drake Maverick fan. I like, oh, hope, he, hope, he, hope he gets in there too. Decent match. Jake Atlas hits his uh, uh, top row cartwheel DDT, which now they call the Rainbow DDT. Uh, what do you think? 
it was it was what it was. It was yeah, like yeah. I don't know. I feel like Tony Nee should be getting something better. Again, like again, these just seem like very shitty two hundred five matches. But even that, the, these matches aren't even that good. These cruiserweight matches. Yeah, but here's the thing: these matches are like nothing matches, but they're not bad matches. I know, but That's like they're, I'm not surprised that they're getting beaten by AEW by this shit. Yeah, but in a yeah, but the, 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 my my point was like in AEW. We're seeing matches with botches and stuff like that. And it's like, what the fuck is going on? At least here, yeah, this is a good match. you're not bad at matches. Yeah. You have an undisputed error video chat where you finally see Kyle O'Reilly back. Uh, they start talking. And um, after that, I mean, it was, to me, it was whatever it was. Then you had a. It was whatever. Car- yeah. You had a carrying cross Scarlet video package, um, which I thought was better than their. Talk, them, you know, lip syncing in their uh, intro. Um, then you had a Dakota Kai video, uh, Dakota Kai slash Gonzalez uh, video package. Um, and then after that, you had a Isaiah Swerve Scott interview where he says in the Cruiserweight tournament, if you don't even have a win, maybe you should quit. All right. Anything yeah. about any of these promos stuff that you saw? Nothing interesting. Nothing you know, interesting. The thing about it is, is that at least the AEW show, even though I was like yelling mm-hmm. and screaming, they said something interesting. This is just like bland. Bland. Nobody One, is really catching my attention. I always said NXT has the better like wrestling product show, right? Mm-hmm. But AEW was just way more entertaining. It's more fun. It, it was. There's more to talk yeah. about. It's like, yeah. it's like, I don't think, I don't think much of these these segments. They're very. Ugh. The only thing was, this week, I did not find an, um, AEW entertaining, like exciting or fun. That's that was well, the only. Me, me neither. Me but uh, I still think it was a better show. Anyway, yeah. now, this part what's... was really. This, this, well, go ahead. What were we saying? Okay. What's next? What part are we? This part about? was very interesting. Then you had Triple H. Oh, this H- was good. H- I like this. Yeah. This is the best part of the show. They're, they're um, sitting by some monitors, and Road Dog comes out, and they start talking, and they go, "Hey, by the way, this Thursday today is actually the 25th anniversary of In Your House, and you know everything being the way it is, we thought it'll be a perfect opportunity to start bringing back. So June 7th, NXT in- Takeover In Your House, which I thought was, um, it's, it's, I think it's a great idea. I think it's I, a good idea. I cannot stand HBK. I hope." Something terrible happens to his body, which I think God has already. I done. did like. I did like they're they're going back and forth and Road Dog reminding Triple H he lost the Hog Pen match. Yeah, even though I can't stand HBK, I thought this was a very good segment. I thought everybody did okay, and everybody yeah. was. Fu- I thought it was funny. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I like the fact they're bringing back simple. in your house with NXT. I like that. that you know, it's it's kind of cool because you know we all are in our house. So I like it. It's. I hope they make it like a very nineties. I hope they bring back the, the in your house set. To have Todd Pentagale, cool. should interview yeah. everyone. Yeah, I thought it. I liked it. It's retro cool. Um, I like I'm excited it. for it. Yeah, and it makes sense. It totally makes sense. You know, mm-hmm. everybody is in your house. You know, yeah. um, what do you call it? Then you had match number four. You had Finn Balor versus Cameron Grimes. This happened right around where the second hour starts at nine o'clock. I like this match. This match is fun. It's very fun mm-hmm. to watch. I was excited. Are we only up match. to nine o'clock. I feel like we're this show now is like an hour five. Yeah, this was uh, yeah, this was at nine o'clock. This is nine o'clock. Oh, oh god! And remember, Finn Balor's been trying to figure out who who had attacked him a couple of weeks ago. While this match is happening, um, Damian Priest comes out and he basically hits Finn Balor on his leg. Finn Balor comes back into the ring, and Cameron Grimes hits him with his cave-in foot stomp. It looked like he he fucked it up, but then the replay. Mm-hmm. Thank God for the replay. Made it look a little better. Okay. Um, and then Damian Priest comes in, hits Finn Balor with a reckoning on a chair. What did you think about this match? Uh, it was short, but it was good. It was short, but it was I just think Finn Balor should be back on the main roster. I don't think he's. I. I. I don't, I'm not really that into Damian Priest or Cameron Grimes. I, like I don't know Cameron why. Grimes, man, he's good. I don't he's like real... him. I didn't like this match. I thought yeah. this. You know, I'm, I'll tell you the truth. I fell asleep during this match. I had to go back and restart it. Um, I fell asleep. <laughs> I had to go find it again. This is what made this thing drag out because, um, yeah, it was, it was, I didn't like it. I don't know. I just couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into it. There's just not a lot there for me. No, I understand. Um, I, I personally liked it. It was, 
I would have liked the match to be a little bit longer and have a little less of a BS, this, but can I also but, this is the worst wrestling war in wrestling history. There's nothing exciting has happened for months. Yeah. Yeah, I this don't even know. This is a horrible. Like, this is not a war. I don't know what this is. This is not this a is war. A, no. This is me being like I'm this is me in 10 years realizing how many Wednesdays I wasted watching this. But this is good. We're making this content. Is, We're not doing fucking shitty comedy. This is, We're making this quality is, uh, content, you and I. You know what it's like? It's like a wrestling Twitter feud. <laughs> that's what it was like. It's not Yeah, it's this like. is not a war. This is the No. Oh my god. Uh, even the worst night shows aren't as boring as 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 these shows, but anyway. Yeah. All right, um, match yeah, it was five. Match number five, you have another Cruiserweight tournament match. Swerve Scott versus Jack Gallagher. Well, Swerve's walking towards the ring. Tony Nese attacks him mm-hmm. and chop blocks, and Swerve gets back. In. And the reason the referee, uh, the commentators say the reason why they probably attacked him was because of his comment. And it, yeah, it, you know, that makes sense. If you're not even going to win a match, you should quit because Tony Nese has zero wins right now, and Jack Gallagher at the time had zero wins. Um, Jack Gallagher uh, has him in the guillotine team and then hits him with a roaring elbow and because the, the gentleman's drop kick he did in the corner that's no longer his finisher Jack Gallagher wins with the roaring elbow which I thought this was fine they're building up towards a feud between Swerve and Tony Nese hopefully yeah. they'll start putting this back onto a five live I, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I'll tell you why I didn't like this I'll tell you why I didn't like this you know, you, 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 this is why I don't like, I don't like this. And this is why I think NXT, no one gives a shit about it right now. Mm. You know, you have Isaiah Swerve. So if you don't have any wins, you should, you should quit. Right. Tony Nese has no wins. Jack Gallagher has no wins. Who has a lot of wins? Akira Tozawa. What's going on with Akira Tozawa on Raw? He's getting destroyed. So you're telling me that Tony Nese and Jack Gallagher can, are not even as good as the guy who gets destroyed on Raw. So yeah. now Tony Nese, who now in my head, I'm like, well, he's not even as good as the guy who gets destroyed on Raw, comes out, beats up Isaiah Swerve Scott. Now Isaiah Swerve Scott gets beat up by one loser and gets pinned by another loser. So now you've told me Isaiah Swerve Scott is not only is he, he can't back up his words, he's also a bigger loser than Tazawa, than Jack Gallagher, than Tony Nese. Like, it's not doing anyone any favors. They're all coming out looking like losers. And that's oh. mainly except for Kushi Badushi because he's not yeah. on Raw getting beat up by Ginger Mahal. Yeah, Kushi and um, Tozawa are the ones with the – Yeah, but Tozawa on Raw was just being treated like a little baby. Exactly. It's just it's yeah. like you're, 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 everyone's being buried in this Cruiserweight tournament. The matches aren't even yeah. that good. So. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, they're making it look bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, match number six, you got Aaliyah versus Caden Carter. Once again, like I said, these – they're not bad. It's just like there's not there's no difference between these two, these women, you know. Yeah, I, don't, I can't even tell you what Caden Carter looks like. It was very whatever. It was again. This was another meh, okay segment. I just Caden Carter wins with uh, like a spinning like um, Indian death lock. You know what it looked like? Do you know who the the luchador Charlie Manson is? No. Oh, um, he does this move called I think it's called like. Pozo or Pogo, it looked like that move. It's, it's like a spinning, like, Indian deathlock, which I thought it looks cool. But, um, yeah, nobody – I mean, Caden Carter wins. This was just like a regular whatever match. At the end – now, now Aaliyah, I think, I thought she was trying to join Robert Stone's – Robbie E's group. Mm-hmm. And because she lost, Robert Stone looked disappointed. So she's probably not going to be a part of that group, I'm assuming. I like I, – I think Aaliyah has a nice look, though. Yeah, I'm but saying. she just she's just a generic person. She, I, there, I, yeah, think, I, just, dude, I thought it was Zelina Vega for like a yeah. while. <laughs> she's, that this is Vega? nothing, nothing yeah. that stands out with this segment. All right, let's let's go. Um, then we have our Gargano segment. Oh, this there. was the worst piece of shit. <laughs> this was the worst piece of shit. This was somehow worse than the basketball game. Than Cody Rhodes lightly driving his car. This got me angry. This got me angry. This was so fucking bad. He is so bad as a heel. And she is the fucking... This looks like two people who, who like, like to fucking play Pictionary trying to become serial killers. Like, it, it, the slow motion you know camera. Horrible. This was fucking it, horrible. I didn't think it was that bad. Oh, I my God. It was so bad. It was... No, so it was... You're telling me this was worse than the basketball thing. Yes. Bro. Yes. No. His acting no way. was worse than the Viking Raiders. Yes. No, no, no. This, this, you- this, and Candace LeRae, they both, they both look like shit. Johnny Gargano was trying to do like this Italian guy talk. Eh, what, yeah, yeah, what, 
then the, the camera would get dark and black and white and uh, now I'm yes. evil. Oh my God, was this bad. Dude. And it just went on and on and on and on and on. Holy shit. I did bad. like how Johnny Gargano mentioned Dijakovic and Keith Lee because now they're trying to move past the Gargano and uh, Chaba no longer feuding with each other. Yeah. Thank the Lord. They're trying to build up new feuds and um, Candice Lurie mentioned Mia Yim how none of these people deserve what they're getting and they should be getting before they, those people. They don't deserve it either. So I, I kind of like I kind of like that how they're building it up I something like that. But really Johnny Gargano and Candice Lurie both do not work as a heel. No, I they will don't. admit to that. They don't. It it comes off super artificial. Um, I didn't like the fact that they were had, they had dinner there, but I hate it. Me personally, I don't like it when you show people with food and they don't eat it. It really oh, pisses uh, me off. Well, I know you, you. You want to eat that food? <laughs> yeah, Here, yeah. Here is like... my. They never should have had DIY break up again. You, you know what? It just. Yeah. He's so bad as eel. You know what? The only thing that was worse this week than this segment. The, these are the segments that make this show go from two hours to ninety-seven hours. The only yeah. thing that was worse was the North segment. But this was horrible. They really need to turn both these people face because Johnny Gargano. I also think Johnny Gargano has stayed in NXT way too long. I really do. I, I think he's at this point he's just hurting himself. The reason why I didn't think this was worse than the basketball segment was, at least this segment made sense. Basketball segment did not make any sense. Oh, this was also just one segment. The basketball segment was I, like three segments. I, I know, but like the basketball segment didn't make me hate. This made me like be. This made me be like this guy has no future. I know he's a great worker. I've I've been enthralled by so many of his matches. But this was just so like just this guy's the pits like it just undoes all the goodwill he's built over yeah. all these years. If yeah. they keep going down this road, he's gonna be. I think you know the problem is they don't have a crowd to gauge a lot of this shit on. Yeah. So, like you can't tell if, if this guy not. if it's working or not, and this is not working. This is horrible. This is horrible. This was yeah. horrible. This was this that, got me mad. This is, is why AEW was better this segment oh uh, yeah i mean that is one of the downfalls of not having an audience that you really can't gauge segments but mm -hmm. um i didn't think it was the worst thing because it was used to move on future feuds the future storylines with calling uh, out the that's why so I, I give it that i was like but i'll right. just tell you what if he if they have johnny organo beat keith lee they're out of their fucking minds i mean or dijakovic that yeah. makes no sense. They're, they're out of their tiny. fucking minds. He, sh he should not be beating them. Especially if he's doing yeah. this cowardly heel bullshit. As yeah. a face, maybe. And But you know, here's the thing. I'm actually, I'm also all in favor of like Damian Priest, Dijakovic, and Keith Lee to stop fucking fighting each other too. You know? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I was all for like, yeah, like everybody fucking move on, fight, feud with other people. Oh, I wouldn't mind seeing Keith Lee for Johnny Gargano, but not if Johnny Gargano's the heel. It makes no sense. Yeah. He's, like a, he's like four pounds compared to this guy. How is he the yeah. heel? Um, so, final match of the night, match number seven, Timothy Thatcher versus Matt Riddle. Um, Timothy Thatcher is like a no-nonsense wrestler. He does a lot of, like, you know, mat work, a lot of, you know, submission holds. And he, you know, he, he tries to be as realistic as a fighter as possible, which this is why he did so many foot stomps in this match. Because if you're somebody's not wearing boots, that's what you're going to do. You're going to stomp on your toes. Yeah. Um, he hits him. <laughs> this, this part I thought was really funny. Um, Timothy Thatcher puts him in a Fujiwara armbar. Matt Riddle gets out of it, and then he points at Timothy Thatcher and goes, "You're not my bro." And then Timothy Thatcher just grabs him, puts him right back in the Fujiwara armbar. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was this realistic. It's, that's what, exactly what would happen. And then um, you're not my bro. <laughs> yeah, he goes, "You're not my bro." It reminded me of like when, like, you know, when like Hogan would be like, "You're not my brother." <laughs> But Brother. it's just funny. He just as soon as he did that, he just mm -hmm. grabbed him and just put him right back in. And then um, Timothy Thatcher had um, Matt Riddle in like an ankle lock and had his leg scissors on him. But then Matt Riddle used it to put him in a pinning position, and he wins. As soon as the match is over, Timothy Thatcher is pissed off, puts him back, uh, beats him up some more, puts him back in a Fujiwara armbar, which is like second time. In both, actually, in both shows we see uh, a match ending with Fujiwara arm bars, but uh, this I don't think they should have had him. I don't think they should have had him. I, I like this match until the finish. I don't think they should have had a Timothy Thatcher lose already. 
I know well, he beat this, him up after. This, this is not over then. Yeah, I know, but I just was like, they rushed. They, they rushed it too much. This show. They, they they those these two were the best part of the show by far. And yeah. period. Yeah. The rest of it was hot garbage. I know you like Finn Balor's match. I didn't. Yeah. Um, well, but if you this match, I would have Timothy Thatcher keep him in the in the in the arm thing until the referee disqualified him, and the show goes off with Timothy Thatcher not letting go. And then you just face that would have been that would have been a better ending, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I liked how this show started off with this, and it this was the thread that carried this whole show where it was like they're building up to this. You guys, you know, that segment's building up to it, and that's why I liked about it. It mm-hmm. wasn't just like a hot mess of a show. The ending, the final match was actually this, this last match was better than Brody Lee for Christopher Daniels. The opening match was better than Cody Cody Rhodes driving two feet yes. and you know so you know over and you know the matches were ho-hum but at least they weren't ho-hum with nonsensical stuff and oh, I think I, I it. oh yeah this was a rough night I still feel like I'm watching these two shows this 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 was a rough night this was a rough it's one thing when one show's bad. It's another thing when you have two two-hour shows that are the pits like this. It's a bad day in the office. It's a bad, bad day, day for both both brands, and it takes a lot out of you. This was by the rough. way. They mentioned some matches for next week on NXT. We're gonna oh, have really? Kushibushi versus uh, Drake Maverick in the tournament. Uh, Iho Del Fantasma versus Tozawa. And this match, this last match, I'm actually excited for. Rio Ripley versus Io Shirai. That's oh, that'll really be good. good I'm excited for that. That'll be good. Yeah. So next week could be better for both shows. Um, yeah. I like doing this because we have a lot to bitch and moan about. On, on yeah, these, uh, yeah. Yeah. But it, 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 it was, it was uh, I got to say, because I fell asleep during NXT, so I had to wake up, restart it. Then I couldn't really go to back to sleep. I didn't get to sleep till 6. I missed this radio thing I was supposed to do that I was getting paid for. I overslept because of it. Uh, you know, I just um, – it was rough. It was a rough uh, – it was a rough go. I didn't finish – I'll tell you what, though. NXT UK, which I'll, we'll talk about tomorrow, way better show. Put me in a great mood. I had I watched that, then I finished AEW. Because I watched half of AEW early this morning, and I finished it like around 8 o'clock, the other half. But this was like an all-day project for me. And uh, and I, I'm not a better man for it. I'm a worse man. <laughs> You know what I got? You know what I got to do? I got to stop doing. I'll tell you what I got to stop doing because that also prolongs Wednesdays. I'll tell you when we get off the air. This, yeah. you know what I do. But anyway, so not a not the not best a good, night, a but night. yeah. But hopefully tomorrow night, Smack Now will be better. Well, NXT UK is already better, but I'm gonna let you watch that and we'll talk about it tomorrow. It was NXT yeah. UK was a great, great episode, and there are some stuff I like to talk about about with you. So I'll wait till you see it, and we'll talk okay. about that tomorrow night. NXT UK, SmackDown, and Two Hundred Five Live. That's right. Um, so it should be good. Night. Two of Her Live is always the best show of the week. So I. What? No, no it's, it's it's interesting. No, that's cool. What, what's interesting? No, no, no. I saw people would be like, really? Two of Five? I'm like, yeah, no, it is. I don't give a fuck. Two last week, pretty good. Last yeah. week was an amazing Ultimate Dragon match. Yeah. Better than fucking. That's true. Better than fucking the North mugging the camera and Johnny Gargano being like, I'm eating pasta wild. over here. Yeah. All right, guys. That's your Goots cast. That's your Wednesday Night War. We'll see you tomorrow for Friday Night SmackDown. Bye, everybody. Hebrew.